Nadia and Rob, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for having me. Surviving that kind of pain and trauma must be so debilitating and destabilizing. How did you turn that kind of pain into, into action? It was definitely not something that I planned for, uh, but when I survived ISIS captivity, so many of my family members were still in captivity. My nieces who were younger than me were left behind. And as I made it to safety, I felt responsible. I felt guilty of surviving while my, my friends, my family members didn't. And I had to do something. I was thinking that if I tell the world my story, they will act and rescue other women and children. And then I will go back to my family. But it was not like that. People were looking at me differently uh, because of, of ISIS use of sexual violence uh, against Yazidi uh, women. But I, you know, despite the, the shame and stigma, I, I didn't give up. And my brother was very honest with me. He said, I don't guarantee you that I will be able to protect you. We are displaced, we don't have anything. And you know how difficult it is to talk about sexual violence. But I also knew that silence on that subject was not a solution and that the world needed to hear my story. And then in the year or two that came after, your life changed very, very dramatically. You started working, I think in 2016, with your lawyer, Amal Clooney, and you started working to hold the Islamic State accountable in court. My understanding, though, is that The Hague hasn't had jurisdiction over Iraq uh, and Syria. How has your fight survived the complications of, of geopolitics? Well, it's been very complicated. Uh, I remember when I was in the camp, uh, people were talking about justice in a very uh, traditional way. I was just thinking about an, an alternative. There must be something. I didn't know about The Hague or uh, lawyers or, you know, that we can bring our case here to the United Nations. And then I, I, I met Amal and I, uh, she explained many things to me and she's so inspiring. She has, you know, uh, helped me to just, you know, know that there is an, another chance to, like a, another way to, to have justice, to achieve justice. But also you have countries in Europe and other places that they don't want then to bring their own citizens back and hold them accountable. Uh, but we were able to create the, uh, the UN team, it's called UNITAD. UNITAD has collected thousands of, of evidence, testimonies, uh, documentations, and now we've been able with survivors um, to hold three ISIS members accountable in, in, in Germany, which is it's, um, what survivors really want. Let's talk about corporations, because the work that you do is survivor-centric and it's based on communities. What would you like to see big corporations do? I think they can help in so many ways, uh, because, for example, with my initiative, I started not this initiative because when I was displaced and I saw, you know, people in the camps, hundreds of thousands of people, then I was able to move to Germany with my sister. And when I started this work, uh, I, I learned that no country was ready to bring millions of refugees or hundreds of thousands of Yazidis to Europe or other places. But keeping them in the camps was not a solution. They're short-term solutions. And, and I, I realized that the, the other uh, sustainable solution is to help people to go back. Uh, but no one was ready to invest in Sinjar. People were telling me, well, the town is destroyed. Uh, we can't really go back. So we need to work with you know, uh, business leaders and, and make sure that we add more services to the region. For example, we are about to build, uh, to open um, uh, first ever women's center in the region and I would love some you know someone to help us how to bring uh, training projects uh, for women and it's not always the politicians that do the best. 
do business leaders believe that they can play a role? I'm, I'm thinking maybe utilities and energy companies or real estate developers. Do you talk to them and say, listen, we, we need you here? Do they, do they seem open or skeptical or, or optimistic? Well, I think one of, of the lessons that I learned that even if, you know, you know that the work is good and it's helping and it's sustainable, it's just so hard to convince people to to come and invest in a region that, like that. But it, it's really important. It, it, is, it is needed and it's important and we have to not, you know, we, we can't just give up on, on post-conflict regions because I believe it, it's doable to, to work there, to rebuild and help people to have a dignified life. If there are people watching who have survived trauma that is different than yours or like yours, or they're worried that they're not going to be able to cope with, with what's happening or with what's happened with them, is there something that you would like to tell them? I just want them to know that they've made it and that's the most important thing and that they're worth it and they're not alone not alone at all you know so many women and girls from all over the world that are now i feel like we are a community and we have survived uh, different things but we're not alone because we have each other even if we don't know each other i'm really grateful that you were here and that you share your story with us thank you thank you so much watch the business week show thursday nights 10 30 eastern on bloomberg television or 8 30 on bloomberg.com or the bloomberg app on connected tvs